Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bebrus Mansouri. I am a PhD student and professor at Science of Technology. And my topic is about handling CFT, which is an MLE model for mathematical formulas. So before that, I think the first question that I should answer is why we have so many people from different schools. And the short answer is that we're working on a project called MathSeer, which is founded by National Science Foundation and Alfred Salon. And the goal of this project is to develop a mathematical information retrieval system. So, what is Mathematical Information Retrieval, or MIR system? Uh, let's consider this researcher here. She's reading a paper and she sees a signal function with that definition. Same as other information retrieval system, this researcher has some sort of information retrieval uh, information needs. In MIR system, the information need is about mathematical concepts. So, she wants to know what this formula is. There are three ways that she can uh, issue the query using only text, what is sigma function, or she can use combination of text and formula, or she can only write down the formula as a query, hoping that she gets relevant formula. In the last case, we call it formula retrieval task, and that's the main topic of this discussion. So to give you a better picture, here a real example from Matt's here. So user can insert that formula query, and we have set up uh, summary cards. We want to first retrieve the fully relevant formula and then the partially relevant one and hoping that we ignore the non-relevant formula. That's the goal of a formula retrieval. So with that, now I want to answer another question, how the formulas are represented in documents. So the first way that formulas are represented in documents are by symbol layout trees such as latex or presentation animal, which shows the appearance of the formula. In this example, I want to show you how symbol layout trees are created. So if we consider that example, a minus y is equal to 2, each of the nodes in symbol layout trees are showing the elements in the formula, the variables, the number, the operator, and the edge labels are showing their spatial relationship. So if we consider x and minus, because minus is located next to x, we have the edge label n here. And then because y is located next to minus, we have edge label here. But in this example, because number 2 is located above y, we have the edge label a. So this is how the symbol layout tree is created for a given formula. Another way of representing formula is by their semantic in form of operator tree. So I skip showing you how this tree is created because I think we know it from um, parsers, uh, the parse tree in compiler. But the main thing to notice here is the edge labels are showing the order of the operands and for cumulative operators such as equal for which the order doesn't matter, we will have the same edge labels. So these are the two ways that formulas are represented in documents, by their appearance in form of symbol layout tree or SLTs or by their semantic in form of operator trees or OPTs. Now I want to discuss the previous approaches on formula retrieval. There are three main categories for formula retrieval, text-based, tree-based, and embedding models. What we have in text-based is uh, trying to consider formula as a text. So in the system such as MIAS, they consider the latest string of the formula and then apply the traditional information uh, retrieval model such as TF-IDF. Also, there are systems like Wikimir where they consider latest string and then they do a string matching. But this kind of algorithm, they need quadratic algorithm and it's like somewhat time consuming. Then they have the three based models. They use symbol layout tree, operator tree, or sometimes combination of both of them, and then they do tree matching or sub tree matching to get the relevant formula. Uh, so Tangent S uh, used both OPTs and SLT. It was developed by our former PhD student. And also, this uh, Tangent S is a good parser for mathematical formulas, and later on in my model, I'm going to use that. And also, Approach Zero, which is developed by another PhD student in our lab, was a state of the art before my system, and it's doing really good on four elements. Then we have embedding models, where my model, Tanya CFD, is also part of this group. But the previous approaches that we have on embeddings, what they did, they tried to consider the formula as a string or as a word, and then use the surrounding word of the formulas to do the embeddings. What I do in my model, I only consider the tree structure of the formula, so I ignore the surrounding text, and I do my embedding based on the tree and uh, the structure of the formula. So I'm not using any of the surrounding text for the formula. So 
Uh, the problem with three-based approaches was that text-based approaches they need for driving algorithm and three-based approaches because they're using the exact structure of the formulas. They do well on four elements, but they're not able to do good on partial elements. Also, one thing about mathematical formulas is that they are unique. So this is a recent study that we did on query logs and queries that are related to mathematical concepts. Our study showed that more than 80% of these queries were repeated only once. So mathematical qu uh, queries can be rare, they can even be wrong and unseen on the data set that we are training our model on. So this is the point that we should consider when we want to develop an embedding model for mathematical formulas. Now I want to explain my model tangent CFD, which is stands for tangent combined with fast x. So this is the overview of my system. Just to summarize what my system is doing, it's quite similar to DeepWalk. So DeepWalk is a graph embedding model, what it does it uh, does some random works on the graph, try to create sequences, and then apply a sequence embedding model. Uh, so in my system, I have uh, formulas, I have a collection of formulas, I use tangent S, which was a good parcel for formulas. I create some set of sequences, which I will explain later, and then I use an n-gram embedding model, because as I mentioned earlier, formulas can be unique and rare or even unseen, so perhaps n-gram embedding models can be a good answer. So after I train my model, I have a vector representation for the, all the formulas in my collection, and when user insert the query, I use my model, I get the vector representation, I apply cosine similarity to find the similar formulas. Now I will go step by step and say what are these steps that I have for my model. So here I'm going to show you how the sequences or what we call tuple are created for given three. So each of the tuples using tangent S, we can get three elements in each tuple. So the first two are showing the nodes, and the last element is showing if you want to move from the first node to the second node, what are the edge labels that we will visit? So we have x minus, and if we want to move from x to minus, we will see edge label n. Another thing that tangent S gives us is the type of the nodes that we have. So x here is variable, we have v value. In simple layout trees for operator, we do not have type. So here is another example. Minus is connected to variable y with edge label n. Also, uh, so here is another example. Variable y connected to number 2 with edge label a. So to somehow generalize my model and not to have a very, very specific model, I designed something which I call uh, SLT type. Where when I'm doing embeddings and extracting tuples, not only I consider the SLT tuples, I consider something called SLT types, where I simply ignore the values and I only keep the type of the variables that we have in our formula. So this is the tuples that are created or the sequences created uh, by symbol layout tree. The only point that I should mention is the end of baseline or EOV that uh, shows the nodes that do not have any children. We have the same things for operator tree. We can extract the sequences, but there are two main differences. First, for operators such as minus, we have O band. And for cumulative operators such as equal, we have U band, which shows on order operator. So this is the first step where we extract tuples or we extract sequences from the tree structure of the formula. Then because I want to use n-gram embedding models, I have to define what are the characters. So even the tuples, uh, what I will do later is consider each of these tuples as the word. But I have to define what are the characters of, of these words. So what I do, I separate the type and the value that we have in tuples. So we have u band, equal, o band, and minus. And for each and for the edge labels, because they're numbers and somehow we need to distinguish them with real numbers, I'll assign unique ID to these uh, edge labels. So what we do here, we get uh, tuples, we separate them by their value and their type, and we enumerate these things to identify the characters. Then we will apply an n-gram embedding model. For that, we will use Plastic, which was developed by Facebook AI. So uh, the tokens that you saw in the previous slides are the character. Each of the tuples will be considered as a word. And for given formula, because we will have a set of tuples and each of these tuples has a vector representation, to get the final representation of the formula, I average this thing. So this is not the best thing that we can do because those tuples are meaningful. They are showing the sequences of the formula. But for now, we're just 
going to average them, maybe a better approach was to use an estimate encoder, which can somehow keep the sequences that we have. And to find the similar formulas, we simply use cosine similarity. So you will have three different models, one trained on SLTs, one trained on operator tree, and one trained on SLT types. So each formula will have three representation. In my first approach, I just summed up these vectors to get the final representation of the formula. Later on, I develop an autoencoder to see how that works, and the outcome was somehow similar. Now, I want to discuss the experiment. For our experiment, we use the anti cellular 12 dataset formula browsing task that uh, it has 40 query, uh, 20 of these query got wildcard, so I had to ignore them. And each of the hits were scored 0, 1, or 2, and so the final score was summation of these. So if we consider that formula, the score 4 and 3 are showing the full relevant formula, the score 2 and 1 are showing partially relevant, and the score 0 means not relevant. And to do a fair comparison, in the previous system, we used the top 1,000 result, and we used BPREF as score measure. BPREF is a good score when we have so many unjudged documents. So for our parameters, we did uh, hyperparameter training. We ended up with, uh, using n-gram size of 3 to 6, with a context window size of 5, and vector size of 300. And what we can see here is tangent CFP is getting the highest partial BPREF score. And even if we consider the OPT or SLT embeddings alone, they're doing better than three based approaches in case of partial BPREF. But they still, the three based approaches, they're doing better on four relevance because they're using the exact matches from the tree. But if you want to consider some other trade off between partial and full relevance and using harmonic BPREF, tangent CFP is getting the highest score. So here is an example. So approach zero was the state of it was doing the best uh, on full relevance. And as you can see in this example, tangent CFT is doing better on partial relevance, while uh, approach zero is doing better on full relevance. And as we look at the example, we can see tangent CFT is trying to get the formulas that have somehow similarities with the given formulas, so somehow trying to extra, uh, get the formulas that share some engrams with the given query. But also, we had cases where tangent CFD could do better than approach zero in case of full and partial relevance. So these are the two formulas that were tagged as full relevant, and approach zero failed to retrieve them, but uh, tangent CFD could. And uh, again, we can see how good the n-gram embedding model can work for formulas. Another thing that we tried to study was to see how we can do good on visualizing the formulas and categorizing them. So, uh, because our vector uh, were in dimension of 300, we used TSNA to reduce them to 2D space, and we got nine lexical categories, each of them got 20 formulas. And as you can see, different categories are separated well, so we have the integral, we have limit, and we, can, we have some good and interesting observations. So, a formula that is circle with green is a formula that contains linear and integral and it's located between these two groups. So the last thing that we did was combining tangent CFT with approach zero. So tangent CFT was doing good on partial relevance and approach zero was doing well in full relevance and wanted to combine the result from these two systems. Uh, so we simply used linear combination of these two and we call the system TANAP. And TANAP could do better than any of the previous systems on partial, full elements, and harmonic. So, to sum up, we introduced an embedding model for mathematical formulas, and our experiment on NTCR 12 datasets showed that we are doing better than the state of the art. So, for our future work, first we are trying to use the surrounding text of the formula and then combine it with the current vector representation that we have. We are trying to use a different graph or tree embedding model to see how it works. And uh, currently, the big problem that we are facing is that our data set is small. It's the only standard data set that we have. It only got 20 queries. And we are planning to extend that. And that's something that we're going to have in play 2020. Uh, there will be a lab on mathematical information with people. So thanks for your attention, and this research was founded by National Science Foundation and Alfred Stadon. And by the way, this is uh, our lab, we have the Twitter page, so it is called Art Map Lab, and there will be two tasks. The first one is answer retrieval for mathematical question, and the other one is the formula retrieval task, which I talked about. Can I correct you that will be a demo for your talk? Uh, yes.
Yeah. So unfortunately, I forgot to. I mean, I missed the email about creating the poster, but I have my laptop and I can show you the demo of the system that we have, and also we can discuss the test that we are having. So over there, put the hands on there. Thank you.